Okay, in this presentation, I am going to look at the chi-square test. And this is a test of association between two categorical variables. I'm just going to sort of move the page around here a second, just so you can get a quick look at that. Uh, just at the top of the screen there, I'm using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, that is the URL, notebooks.azure.com. Okay, you can Google that. I set up a little account and I've just opened a Jupyter Notebook that works for R here. Okay, so um, okay, so down to business now. So, oh, that went a little bit too big. That's grand. Okay, so what we're going to do here is look at the chi-square test. It's a test of association. Do the uh, outcomes of one do the outcomes of one categorical variable is a relationship with the outcomes of another uh, variable? Is some outcome of one variable like does it happen a lot in the context of another outcome? Okay, or are they totally independent? Okay, so that's essentially what the question is. Now I'm not going to get too much here involved in the statistics of it. I'm more so interested in the mechanics of it from the point of view of R. So anyway. Uh, I'm just going to load up some packages there, the MASS package, and the reason I'm going to use that is because it has a data set that I'm going to use called survey, okay? I'm also going to use dplyr and magreter there just to have them handy in case I need them. So run that, what happens there is I will get a little bit of an error there, uh, well not an error, a warning message. Okay, so I'll just run it again just so it uh, doesn't over overwhelm it, okay? So if you just rerun it again, the the the, the message uh, disappears. The warning message. It's an interesting thing, actually, which is what happens. What you need to use the MASS and dplyr package together, but that is uh, for a different video. Okay. So data survey uh, head of survey. So just actually called the survey data set, and what we're looking at here is the first six cases. So we have sex. WR hand, NW hand, I'm not quite sure what they are, but you can look at them up in the help file, okay? Um, what I'm going to actually be particularly interested in is two of the variables down here, exer, which is exercise, and smoke, okay? So these are sort of categorical variables related to how much a person exercises and how much they smoke, okay? So that's what the ones I'm going to focus on there, okay? And so what I'm going to do here is actually just have a, this is a, from the uh, dplyr package, Glimpse. Uh, you might be familiar with str. If you're not familiar with dplyr, the str just gives you sort of a quick sort of sense of what each, how each variable is structured, okay? So str does something similar. Okay, now, um, this is the ones I'm looking at here. They're both fctr, that means factors, okay? Now, so they're they're automatically set up as factors, so I like I don't have to do anything. But if it was the case that they weren't factors, it would be handy to tra uh, translate them into factors. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So moving on from that, let's go down here. And what I'm going to do is do a, like, a quick cross tabulation of those two categorical variables. Okay. And the command is simply table okay table survey uh, dollar sign smoke and survey dollar sign exer okay and where are we gone just down here a little bit there we go so that is a cross tabulation okay of uh, the outcomes okay now just actually something that just sort of bugs me here is that look at the levels of each okay so first off we have uh the levels of smoke i'm just going to change that there because i know it's a factor okay so just down here below it and uh, this actually tells us all the possible outcomes there heavy never occasional regular that is not a good sort of hierarchy there's no sense to that heavy then never then occasional then regular Okay, now what happens here is that they're presented in alphabetical order, H-N-O-R, that's alphabetical order. And if we were to do something similar with XR, we get a similar sort of outcome, frequently none, some. Again, the order there is actually by alphabetical order, but actually if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Now that's just a sort of a bit of a bugbear, because if you have a cross tabulation like that, like this one here, 
you do want the ordering to make some sort of sense, okay? Just to make the table a bit easier to read, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort the factors, okay? So I'm going to really sort them out. Never occasional, regular, heavy. Okay, so just put them in the order I want them. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it, but I, I, I think actually the simplest way and is actually just re-level it like this. So levels of survey dollar sign smoke. Just give it the re, re, uh, use the uh, the levels again, okay, and just put them in the right order, okay. Now you can actually sort of um, there's a couple of different uh, techniques to that, but actually, I'm a bit of a sort of person who likes just sort of like check back over your work. So I actually sort of spelt it out a bit fun fully, like you know, uh, there's quicker ways of doing it, but essentially, uh, fundamentally, uh, they're always the same thing. Okay, so levels, uh, so essentially what happens, I've re I, I sort out the levels, and let's have a look at my handiwork, okay. So, never, occasional, regular, heavy, there's a sort of good sense to that, like, never uh, is probably, you know, there's a hierarchy there, never to occasional, to regular, to heavy, that's in terms of smoking, and none to some to frequent, that also has a sense to it as well, okay. Make that sensible, okay? That, and that's what we want, sensible outcomes. So what I'm going to do here is actually just as an aside, just introduce this other command here called TB, or prop table. It actually puts it in terms of proportions, okay? So that's really handy. So this is just the, 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 the joint probability table, okay? So uh, now the, the total... Uh, summations there that, that, that essentially that that will add up to one okay so um what i'm going to do here is now i'd actually i think this command does not work the options command doesn't work great in azure notebooks so what i'm going to do here is i'll just test it just to see if we can get it to three decimal places it does not work to three decimal places oh hang on a second i picked the wrong one uh well three digits okay so essentially what you can also do there is actually this is one i find way more intuitive just using the uh the options command the digits command there so three decimal places you know rounded to three decimal places job done okay so um that's the magritter pipe operator from magritter actually and then so that's a, that's a sort of pretty handy to know. Now what I've done here actually, sorry, just actually what I've gone back to is uh, table one. So essentially what I have here is when I put in the uh, value one there, or the argument one, one, it actually gives me the proportions by row, okay? So that, that row would add up to one for the row, that would add up to one for that row, and so on, okay? Now you can do it for column as well, um let's just do it there for column the those are the column percentages okay now we're ready to do our chi squared test okay so just this is a sort of formal test okay now chi squared test the command is simply chi squared dot test okay uh for the sake of simplicity there's actually you can actually uh, specify the table as well actually i just have it done there below so i'll just come back to that in a second so uh, it just actually gives a warning message that the chi-squared approximation may be incorrect. And there is a particular reason for this, is if I was to go back up here, the small cell sizes are here are a problem, okay? One, three. So essentially the joint frequency there is too low, such that uh, what happens is that the the chi-square test needs joint frequencies of about five in each of the, the cells of those tables at least five okay i'm not quite sure of what the actual uh off the top of my head it uh, just actually there's a a sort of threshold uh that they have to be above okay for the approximation to be correct okay so essentially what we're going to do there is there's a couple of different ways we're going to do this so chi-square test so let's just go down here see where we are i, I lost the run of my tread here there we go again you can put in the table there as well the cross tabulation there if you want it gives the same sort of answer okay now um i'm not going to talk, like i'm essentially as far as what we have concerned uh, as far as we're concerned here this is a not a significant result okay so as far as 
what the question I posed specifically to R is is this significant? The answer is no. The p-value there is very high. Okay. Now, but usually that's not the problem actually with the chi-square tests. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways that you can sort of essentially what the problem is is well, we have to uh, what we're going to do here is re we're going to combine a, one of the levels. Okay. So what we need to do here is um, we can actually, I'll tell you what, it's actually, that's one way of doing it there that I have there at 31. But I think it's just like for the sake of clarity, I'll actually just sort of favor the second way. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is come up with a derived variable. Don't, don't throw away the raw data, just make a derived variable. So initially, I'm going to just sort of combine, create exercise two. And just to start off with, I'll populate it with the values of exercise one, or sorry, exercise, okay? Now what I'm going to do here is re-level it, okay? And essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine the outcomes none and sum into a new sort of category called rare, okay? And I'm going to leave frequency alone, okay? So let's have a look at that and see what happens there. So now, rather than none and some, just rarely or never, okay? And in this case, what can ha now is going to ha what is now going to happen is that, well, we've improved the situation considerably with regards to the joint outcomes. Now, I'm just going to, I mean, what you can do there is keep uh, running the same procedure again. Um, there has to be make a, make a sense to it actually. That can get regular. Uh, and heavy can you combine you can combine them into another one as well but essentially just doing what I've um, just done there previously let's look, have a look at the chi-square test now we're probably going to skip still get that same outcome of the error message because of the joint probability the, the cell size being too low there, yeah there it is but a uh, little bit uh, more clarity now the p-value has changed considerably okay well that would make sense it would because we were, we're posing a slightly different question Okay, now, so in this case, it's still a significant p-value, or sorry, not a significant p-value. Okay, now the key thing there actually is the levels, uh, combining levels and so on, because that's, uh, that's actually the key thing I think you need to know for working with chi-square tests, just sort of combining levels just to make it a bit more sensible. Right, okay.